we're going to be talking about resist. Someone put a fist up in the air and say resist. All right, y'all look good. Okay. Last week, our pastor talked about um, not bowing. We will not bow. Right? Remember, that was a powerful word. We will not bow. Today, we're going to talk about resist. You know, there, the, it's so important the resistance works that, that is going on today, right? I mean, you believe it's important with this administration that we have. It's so important to have this resistance work, you know, because resistance is essentially the refusal to accept or comply with something. Like, no, no, we're not going. We're, we're, not, we're just not going. Can we just say, we're just, we're just not going. We're just not going, Right? So the good thing, if we can say anything that's good has come out of this administration, is that the good thing is that we're seeing millions of people join together by race and, and ethnicity and religion. I mean, it's a beautiful thing to see so many like-minded people. If anything else has not happened, that is a beautiful Thing to see so many people. Um, you guys, I don't know if you guys saw this. There are uh, people came together. Hundreds of people came together at Ocean Beach. Thousands of people. And they made a thing, you know, out of their bodies. They made the word resist. Isn't that beautiful? Thousands of people came together. Um, and, you know, the good thing about that is when you resist, um, we're not going to to, we're saying we're not going to take it anymore because when you comply, you're essentially saying it's okay. When you just sit there and be like, oh, well, you just turn on the channel, you read the news, well, I guess that's okay. Whenever you comply, you're giving your permission, all right? So that's how so many people are like, no, right? How many are joining in this resistance where we're saying no? And as a result, as we know, we've seen that this administration has gone back and had to tweak a few things, right? They had to go back and revamp a few things. They had to go back and take a few things back and, no, oh, no, we're going to roll out something different. So it works when we resist. Do you guys agree with that? Resistance works. We've seen this all through church history. We've seen this through the civil rights history, that resistance works. So I just want you to know that Sometimes things in the physical realm mirror the things that are in the spiritual. A lot of times God is speaking to us prophetically through the natural on things he wants us to look at in the spirit. So I want to propose to you on today that along with resisting in the world and in our country, there is some resistance work that we need to do in the spirit. Amen. It is so good for us. How many people have been out there protesting? I love y'all who have been in the marches. You've been out there. God bless you. We're going to join. We're going to stand. That's what our church is all about. But at the same time, as we mirror that, we need to mirror that in the spirit. There are a lot of things that we just comply with in our lives. There's a lot of things we just comply with. There's a lot of things that we've just said, okay, and we're just going along with. Like every time a crazy thought runs to you, through your mind, you're just going you're just gonna to run with it. Or every time I'm tempted, I'm just going to roll with it. Every time somebody cuts me off, oh, you're going to hear this horn, right? <laughs> every time I'm fearful, I, I'm, I'm just going to back out. No, I, I, it's too much. Or every time somebody look at me crazy, you know, we, we could just keep on going. There's some things we're just, we're just complying with. Sometimes we just have a severe case of that I can't help it. Am I, am I alone in here? Y'all with me? I just, got to, I just got to can't help it. I'm just, it's just the way it is. If that happens, if, if a certain person call at a certain time, I'm just going, the opportunity is, is just presenting itself. Am I getting too real for the young? We got, we all right? All right, come on, come on. I mean, and, and, and even addiction, sometimes we're too complacent with addictions, and I'm like, and I'm not just talking about substance addictions. We're addicted to mindsets sometimes. Addicted to habits, mental habits. Things you keep telling yourself over and over again. 
I'm not worthy. I'm not able. You're just condemning yourself over and I'm not lovable. I can't do it. I don't have it in me. Nobody in my family's ever done this, so I can't do it. Things you rehearse over and over again. Things that keep you up late at night that you just go through your mind over and over and over again. And you know what, saying Sometimes we just comply with it. Oh, that's just the way it is. It's just the way life is. I just, this is how I think, and I'm, I'm not too late. I'm not going to change now. And we just kind of live with this sense of complacency. We just comply with things. But there has to come a time in your spiritual life when you say enough is enough. Enough is enough. Do I have anybody in here who feels like, you know what, enough is enough. Enough is enough. No, 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 I'm not going. There's got to be a better way. And that's why I'm here to talk to you today. The Lord has a word for you today for you to know that it's time to step up and say, hold on, it's not, it's not over, enough is enough. So I have breaking news. We have a spiritual enemy, if you didn't know. Oh, Lord, what's going on up here? Why y'all didn't tell me? Y'all just going to let me. Oh, I thought y'all loved me. Mm -mm -mm. I thought y'all loved me. Y'all don't love me. Y'all just going to let me be up here with the movies. It's okay. There it is. There we go. Y'all, I thought y'all was with my on my side. There we go. We back to resistance. Oh, y'all, next time y'all tell me, y'all just got me up here. All right, y'all with me? All right, so we got breaking in. There is an enemy. We have a spiritual enemy. He is real. He is real. How many are just tired of the devil coming in your life? How many are just tired of the devil just coming in when he wants to? Just wreaking havoc whenever he wants to. Just slipping in, talking to you whenever he feels like it, doing whatever he's setting up shot. He's making a sandwich all in your mind. He's taking a nap. He come and he stay. He don't pay no rent. He just come. He go when he please. Enough is enough. Today, we are going to learn some resistance training. Y'all with me? Resistance training. Now, I know we got our brother Moses back here. Hi, Moses. He was our, our fitness guru when he was here. So how many people are into fitness? You ever did the resistance training? Okay, I see you fit people trying to get on your level. You guys know what resistance training is? You know, back in the day, they just had like one rubber band. Like it was long and was like one rubber band, 100 exercises. And it was like, what? What can I do with this one little band? But it turns out that the more you resist, the stronger you get, right? So how many need some spiritual power? I know I do. We need spiritual power. And, and if you're like me, I'm tired of getting pushed around by the devil. I'm tired of getting pushed around by the devil. It's just as though, can you imagine if Mike Tyson had a son that went, like, was like in junior high or something? Just imagine this with me. Mike Tyson has a, a son in junior high, but he gets bullied every day. Like some kids are like beating him up every day. Would that even make sense to you? Like, dude, your dad is Mike Tyson. How are you getting beat up every day? Well, it's kind of similar in the spirit. How are we getting beat up every day by a devil and our father is the king of glory? How is this happening that we're just compliant with everything that's going on? I just, I, that's just the way it is. I just got to take it. When we serve the king of glory. James, where our verse today is coming from James 4, 7. And this verse tells us how to gain some spiritual muscle. Spiritual muscle equals spiritual power. This is a powerful verse. It says, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Everybody got that? James 4, 7. Simple verse. This is all we're staying at right here. But this has got to be one of the most misquoted verses in the Bible. 
Most of the time when people quote this, they be like, girl, just resist the devil, he going to flee. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Who is texting me? The devil is, you see how he, you see how the devil is in my, in my messages? Notifications off. Hi, Alex. Alex, hi. Thank you. I got people watching Facebook Live. Help me. Airplane. I don't know. Help me. I'm not tech savvy. Hold on, guys. Uh-huh. There it is. Airplane. There it is. Help me. Oh, look at the devil. Okay. Wow. Good old technology. All right. Oh, yeah, we're back. Wrong verse. Okay. Here we go. Y'all with me? Thanks. Oh, wait. One more thing. Thank you. Oh, look at the Lord. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Brother Andre. What? It's the Lord. Bam. Wi-Fi. Woo! Everybody clap it up for the Lord. Lord. Break. Okay, we back. James 4, 7. The most misquoted verse in the Bible. Most of the time people just say, submit to, submit to God, the, devil, the devil's going to flee from you. They, they resist the devil, he's going to flee from you. Just resist the devil, he's going to flee from you. It's a very misquoted verse. But I want to give you just two very important keys to having spiritual resistance. Two important keys to spiritual resistance. And it's found right here in this verse. The first thing is, very plainly, submit to God. It's very plain. Submit to God. Submit means to accept or to yield to a superior force or an authority or the will of another person. All right? Just simply submitting to something that's far more superior than you. Anybody um, did wrestling in high school? Anybody? No? Wrestling's not a big part. Oh, hi. Hi, at least it's okay. I see. Um, anybody ever played a ghetto game of uncle? There it is. There we go. Now I know who I'm dealing with. All right. Nobody did it in high school. Okay. Uncle. Remember, remember old school uncle? You're probably your mean older brother or cousin would, like, do something crazy to you, and you, they did it until you yelled what? Right. When you, therefore, yelled uncle, you were what? Submitting. You're like, I can't take no more. You, have you, any of y'all was stubborn? Like, you, it would hurt. You didn't care. You was still, you was crying. You wasn't going to say uncle. I'm just going to know until you finally just, you know, give in. That's the kind of word picture I want you to think of that not the meanness of your brother, but the, the letting go, the submitting to something that's far greater than you. That is the submission God is looking for. So submission to God is your access to spiritual power. Think about it. Your spiritual power comes by submitting to God. So full submission, you have full power. Partial, partial submission to God, partial power. No submission to God. So we don't want to submit to God, then we wonder why Christianity don't work. We're not doing nothing, he said. I ain't doing it, no. How come I go to church all the time and my life is still crazy? How come things aren't quite lining up in my life? Could it be that you have not fully submitted your life to God? Fully submitted to the point where you're like, uncle, I give. I don't, you can have it all. I'm talking about a full submission. How can we be fully submitted to God? How? So he's surrendering completely to his lordship, completely. I'm talking about a full surrender, that there is nothing within your heart or your mind that you are withholding from God. 
Now, there's not a corner. There's not a closet. There's not a kitchen. Don't, you know, if somebody comes to your, go everywhere, but don't go in that, don't open that door. Please, you know, you know they coming over, you done squeezed everything up in that house, in that, that one uh, closet pantry, right? That's the same thing we do with our lives. Lord, you can be in the living room. Remember the old school granny living room? With all the cover, with this plastic cover furniture. See, you go to every room but that. Nobody sit on that furniture, Jesus. You could go in every room but not in here. And then sometimes we do that with our lives. But God is looking for a full and complete surrender to his lordship. Saying, God, my life is yours. I want you to have complete control. Do you remember saying that at a time in your life? Think about it. I want you to reflect. When was a time in your life when you gave him everything without conditions? God, I give you everything, but, but well, I give you everything I have if. No conditions. God, I am yours. Complete control. You can have my whole life. And, there, and I know everything's not perfect. I know I'm not doing everything right. I'm not. But guess what? He wants to be Lord of that too. A lot of times we want to come to God. I'm going to come to you after I clean it up, after I fix it. I got to call these three people and then I'll be back to you, Jesus. He wants you now. Someone say now. He wants you mess and all. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. He didn't wait. Okay, so when you get your life together, then you can apply for this cross benefit that you No. He died for the ungodly while we were sinners. So guess what? He wants your complete control while you're a sinner right now. In your mess, in your heartaches, in your me- everything that's going on, your dramas, your addictions. God wants you now. Will you give him complete control? How else can you be fully submitted to God? Developing a habit of saying yes to him. How to be fully submitted. Develop a habit of saying yes to God. So many times we hear God speaking, we feel him in our hearts, we feel him in our knower, and he's telling us to do something, and our first reaction is, no, no. And more than that is no, Lord, which is an oxymoron if you think about it. Just the expression, no, Lord, I think Peter did that in a no, Lord. How can you say no if someone is your Lord? The definition of a Lord is somebody you serve and that you're willing to do anything for. So if you say no, Lord, that's an oxymoron. You can't, he, then is he really your Lord? Get a habit of saying yes to God. Yes, Lord. Come on, let's practice. Say yes, Lord. Come on, get in the habit of saying yes, Lord. As soon as you feel him, Soon as you hear him, soon as you anything that's going, just begin to say, yes, Lord. I need you to go over here. Yes, Lord. I need you to do this. Yes, Lord. I need you to talk to this person. Yes, Lord. I need you to give that person $5. Um, is that you, Lord? Then all of a sudden we can't hear none. Is that? Was that Jesus? Get in the habit of saying yes. And once you say yes to him, the other way to submit to God is to quickly obey his promptings. Quickly. Don't go sit on it. Don't go. I got to go think about it over a a night. I got to go see. I got to go talk to a couple of friends. When God is asking something of you, do it quickly. Do it immediately. We're talking about a fully submitted life. Sometimes we pray about things that shouldn't, we need, don't even need to pray about. God, should I talk to this person about you? Let me go pray about it. Wait, what? Should I, should I show love to this person? I'm going to go think about it overnight. Do it quickly. Obey him immediately. So that's the first thing is fully submitted to God. And my prayer is that you would fully submit to him on today. If you've never done it before, this is your opportunity to fully submit your life to him. The second thing is really two points to having a spiritual resistance is resist the devil. The, the scripture says, submit to God, there, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil. 
Resist the devil. He is our spiritual enemy. Why do you need to resist him? I'm going to give you a few, a few reasons why we need to resist him. First of all, the devil is not just some cute little character in a red suit with a pitchfork and horns. Right? That, you know, he would love for you to think that. So then you want, you know, we, at Halloween we put the little things on and put them on our kids. And, you know, yeah, we, he, he's fine with you thinking that that's who he is, some little play thing, right? But let me tell you who he really is and why we need to resist him. Just like God has a plan for your life, the devil has a plan for your life also. You know, his plan, according to um, John 10.10, 10, is to kill, to steal, and to, just, and to destroy you. It says, the thief comes only but to kill, steal, and destroy. But I am come that they might have life and might have it more abundantly. That's his plan for you, people. He's not out here playing games. He's not out here just, you know, being in a costume and making you laugh. He wants to kill you, kill your relationships, kill your purpose, most of all. If he could kill your purpose, he got you because you're walking around aimless in his life, doing whatever you want, not knowing what your purpose is. He wants to steal from you, and he wants to destroy you. This is who the devil is and why we need to resist him. And how will he go about this if that's his, if that's his aim? According to 1 John 2.16, he says um, he will use the desires of the eye, the desires of the flesh, and the pride of life to accomplish this goal. He only has three modes of operation, people. He has no new tricks. I just want you to know. No new tricks. Ever since the Garden of Eden, he's not creative at all. He only has three things. That he wants to, he's going to draw you in by the desires of your eyes, the desires of your flesh, and the pride of life. So basically, he wants you to want your own way, want everything to yourself, and wants you to want to appear important. Every song that's on the radio, every commercial, every image, everything we see is all about wanting more. Every song is about looking like you got everything. The outfit, the jewelry, the shoes. It's all about image. This is, what he, this is how he's trying to trap you. And... The other thing why we need to resist him is because he's a liar. According to John 8, 44, it says, Satan was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. He is a liar and the father of lies. Why should you resist the devil? Because everything he says is a lie. He's the father of lies. Which means that, I mean, that's cold. That's the one thing to be a liar. But if you're the father, you birth lies. <laughs> like, that's all you do? Like, DJ Cal, all you do is win? All you do is lie? That's all you got? So, look, listen carefully, saints. So, everything he says to you, believe the exact opposite. He's a liar. Everything he's saying, you're not going to make it. Guess what? You're not smart. You're not beautiful. You're not intelligent. You don't have what it takes. What? Thank you, devil, for letting me know who I really am. So every time you hear him, every time you hear negative thoughts, every time you know that's not coming from God because God only speaks truth. So when you hear him in your ear, believe the opposite. He's the father of lies. That's why we need to resist him. Why else we need to resist him? Well, he's a double agent. You know why I say that? The devil's the only one who will tempt you to do something, then immediately shame you with guilt and condemnation after you do it. That's a double agent. You're a spy. I mean, he talking up good, like it's about to be lit. We about to, ah, uh, this is, it's going down. You can't pass this up. And as soon as you partake in it, look at you. Look at you. 
You call yourself a Christian? Mm-mm-mm. Just a shame. How you going to church on Sunday? How you going to get up there and sing? They probably saw you. He's here. He's a double agent. This is why we need to resist him. Resistance training. Come on. He also specialized in getting us to doubt God's word. We saw this in the Garden of Eden in Genesis um, 3.1. His famous words to Eve was, did God really say he shouldn't eat the, I'm just checking because, did he really say? So his job is to always get you to doubt what God has said to you. He's always getting you to, did, did God really say that you, because it looks like you're broke right now. So I don't know if you're really going to be a doctor. <laughs> I'm just saying. Are you, did God really say? He wants to get you to doubt his, God's word. That's his job. So we're exposing him today. We're exposing the works of the enemy. The other reason why we need to resist him is because essentially he's a fake. I'm going to tell you why. First Peter 5, 8, and 9. The devil is a fake. He's a fraud. It says um, in 1 Peter, be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking to devour someone. Verse 9, what does it say? Resist him. Firm in your faith knowing that the same kinds of sufferings are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the word. Let me tell you why he's a fake. The key word here is like a lion. The devil prowls around like a roaring lion. Because there's only one lion, the lion of the tribe of Judas, and that's our God. That's our God. But everything God has, he wants to produce a counterfeit. He's a fake. So if he's walking around like a lion, that many means he's like a toothless kitty cat walking around here behind like a, you know, remember the, the Oz? Remember the, the either Wiz or the Oz? Remember, the, remember the, when they finally got to the wizard and he was like, rah, and all the lights and smoke. And then when they got in the little back room, it was like some little guy, like, doing stuff. Same thing. He's like a roaring lion. He's just out here trying to devour somebody, but he really doesn't have any teeth. He really doesn't have any power. He's just a fake. He's a fake. And then the last reason why we need to resist him is because Jesus already stripped him of power. He's already defeated, people. This verse is so... Amazing. This is Colossians 2. It says, when you were stuck in your old sin, dead life, you were incapable of responding to God. But God brought you alive right along with Christ. Think of it. All sins forgiven. The slate wiped wipe clean. That old arrest warrant canceled and nailed to Christ's cross. This is the important part. He stripped all the spiritual tyrants of the universe of their sham authority at the cross, marched them through, marched them naked through the streets. This is what he did at the cross. This is why you need to understand. This is why we need to resist him. This is why we shouldn't just put up with everything he brings into our lives because he's already been defeated. When Jesus died on the cross, it canceled out all of our sin, everything he's trying to hold over your head, everything that is against you. God's already died for it. He's already died for it. And not only that, he was so cold, like they would do in the, in the old times, whenever they would win a victory, they would march the enemy that they beat through the street, like made a parade of them, make them walk naked through the streets, like, eh, we won, we won, we, you know, like it was a championship parade. Jesus already did this to the devil in the spirit. He has no power. He's been stripped of power. He's already defeated. He's already lost. But on his way down, he will take as many ignorant and gullible people as he can. 
The only power he has is the power you give him. That's the only power he has. The only power he has is what we give. So this is the, the, the culmination of it all. What happens when you submit to God and resist the devil? It says an amazing thing. The devil will flee from you. This is amazing. This is the only verse where we see we have the power to put the devil on the run. The only verse in Scripture, flee. I'm not talking about jogging. I'm not talking about a brisk walk. I'm not talking about power walking. I'm not talking about skip. How many people ran track? Yeah. Where you at? Track runners. I'm talking about when the gun goes off, flee. Like, this is the word the Bible used. Flee to run away from a place or a situation of danger. The devil will flee for you from you because you are dangerous to the kingdom. You are dangerous. Think about this. We take so much from him. We're so compliant. Don't you want to flip that on the devil? Well, now it's time to be like, no, devil, now you going to run. No, you've been all up in my mind. Now it's time for you to get going. I don't know why I just got ghetto right there. <laughs> Something, the Oakland. All right. Your submission to God and your resistance to the devil is the only combination that will make him flee. It doesn't work one without the other. You can't just submit to God, but don't resist it. Now, God, I'm submitted to you, but everything he throw at you, okay, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. And you can't just resist the devil without the power from God. It's too much. It's that the only combination is submit to God, resist the devil, and then the devil will flee from you. Why? You ever think about this? This is crazy. You can make the devil run? Because the devil hates submission. He hates it. This is why he got kicked out of, out of heaven. You're, when you submit to God, you're going somewhere he's never been. It's uncharted territory for him. He's never, he's never experienced submitting to God. For when he was in heaven, he was overall the... Um, the, the worship and the music, and he was beautiful. And he was like, hey, I got all these jewels, and I'm blinging and stuff. Y'all should be worshiping me. Like, why y'all worshiping him? Hey, everybody worship me. I'm the one beautiful. So he led this rebellion against God. Instead of coming to God like, you know, I got all this pride, God. I need help. He would not submit to God. Instead, he rebelled against God. The opposite of submitting to God is rebellion. When we rebel against God, we say, God, no. God, I got this. God, I'm going to do it my own way. No, I, this, I'm still enjoying this over here. No, I'm doing. That's the opposite of submitting is rebelling. Satan can't even hang with you when you submit to God. It's a foreign feeling to him. So how do we resist them? I'm giving him three points, and we are done. How do we resist the devil? The first thing you do is you resist him with your worship. With your worship. Remember I just told you he was over the worship in heaven. So every time you worship God, you're reminding him of his old job. Of his old duties that he got kicked out of heaven because he wasn't acting right. So every time you worship God, Every time you lift your hands and say, God, I surrender to you, yes, yeah. God, you're wonderful, you're glorious. He can't do nothing with that. He can't do nothing with that. He hates worship. That's why worship is just not sitting in these pews. And then when we do the music, worship could be at home while you're in your bed. Worship is driving in your car. Worship is while you while you cooking dinner. God, I worship you. God, I love you. God, I thank you for everything you're doing in my life. And worship is even when everything's not going right. That's where he gets us. Everything going crazy. And you're like, yeah, things going crazy. Yeah, things going crazy. 
Yeah, God must like, I don't think God loved me. But at that point, things are going crazy. Yeah, things are going crazy, but I trust God. No, 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 I trust him. Man, I don't know if you're going to have enough money. No, it's going to be there. God is faithful. God, God, God will take care of it. He's in control. So instead of yielding and running with that thought, flip it on work. Flip it on the devil. Tired of him. You don't have to just take everything he brings. Flip it on him. All right, the other thing, how to resist him. Resist him with your yes. Remember, we already talked about that. Give God a yes. Give him a yes. He's brought you even into this place. You feel him pulling on your heart. You feel him pulling on your mind. You feel him saying, man, this is the place I need to be. Man, I need to get more spiritual. I need to get more into my word. Give him a yes and not an excuse. Don't give God no more excuses of why you can't, why you shouldn't, why you're not ready. Just give him a yes. Somebody say yes. And the third thing, how do we resist the devil? We resist him with the word of God. This is so important because we have a great time in here, and then we leave, and then we never open our Bible app or our Bible again. It's just the equivalent of having a gun in a dangerous situation, and you don't got no bullets. You just... Don't get, what, what, what use are you, <laughs> right? Same thing in our spiritual life. If we have this Christian life, but we don't have the word of God, we don't have no bullets. We don't have no ammunition against the devil. I'll tell you why. When Jesus was being tempted by the devil, the devil tried to come to him with all these things. Do this, do that. He, the only thing he fought the devil with was the word of God. He kept saying, no, it is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. He didn't, he didn't do a whole bunch of, well, you know what, devil, that is a good point. But I will have to say that I am trying to analyze in my, he didn't even rash, rationalize with the devil. He just had scripture. If you don't have any scripture to give the devil, you have no ammunition. Saints, we got to get in our word. Read the word for yourself. I tell our kids all the time, when I grew up, all we had was King James. That's all we had. We had to struggle. The Lord thou thee bestoweth upon us thine. And we'd be like, whoo, okay. But today there's really no excuse. There's like a hundred English versions of the Bible. Get in your word. Read it for yourself. It's that that's how you fight off the devil. I'm scared. No, the Lord is my light, my salvation. Though, yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death. I, you got to be able to rattle off scripture to him. That's how you fight him. Stop letting him just come up in your mind and do whatever he won't. Fight him with the word. Fight him with the word. And then when Jesus did that, if you look at Luke 4 and 13, it says the devil departed from him. He couldn't even do nothing with him. When he kept saying it is written, it is written, he was like, ah, I got to go. Don't you want that in your life? Aren't you tired of him just doing whatever he want? It's time for us to resist. It's time for us to resist, saints. We don't have to let the devil do whatever he want. We're doing resistance training. And could it be just like that resistance band, the more you resist him, the stronger you get? Could it be? Every time you give him a no, Every time you say no, it is written. Every time you worship, you're getting stronger, and you're getting stronger, and you're getting stronger. So let's resist, saints. Let's resist. Let's not let the devil do what he wants. You have greater power in you that's living inside of you right now than him that is in the world. So let's all stand.